All right, everybody, welcome back to Balaka's Fish Room. So today we are back in, in front of the, uh, the six foot tank where we've got a community of, uh, of a mixture of different South and Central American cichlids. Uh, and today I actually wanna go through uh, my top eight tips on, um, on how to actually uh, assemble a community tank of aggressive cichlids, aggressive large American cichlids. And, um, and how you need to go about it and the best way and the things you need to have on hand and, and everything like that. So here are my, my top eight tips uh, for keeping a community tank of South and Central American cichlids. Alrighty, so tip number one and, and something you can definitely expect is do not expect your, your fish to be pretty all the time when they're in a uh, community tank. You can see this male Zenitis just on the top of its uh, just below its dorsal fin on that side, you can see that white spot. Um, so that's a few scales that are actually missing because yeah, it was in a, it was in a fight with some other fish um, throughout the day or throughout the last couple of days. But that's totally fine. These fish are big, they're aggressive. The scales will come back and, um, and they'll be all good. So, so you're not gonna have the prettiest of fish all the time. You know, you might have fish that have little uh, frayings of their tail. You might have scales missing. You might have damage to their heads or their lips or something like that. So you definitely do need to keep more of an eye on things and, and treat anything if it gets infected. But, but you know, don't, don't be surprised if, uh, if your fish aren't always the prettiest. Okay, the next tip or point I want, I want to make is that at some point you might need to, uh, to sell one of your fish. It may be too aggressive. It might just be relentless and, and doing damage to some really key fish that you want to keep. So I'm going to focus on this guy today um, because over the last week or so, his, um, the, the bottom of his chin and the underbelly, when he gets angry, and he's been getting angry a lot more often, uh, he gets a lot of black that comes through his face and comes under his chin. You can kind of see it's developing under there right now. So he's been getting in a lot more scuffles and a lot more fights with, uh, with other fish. And, um, and so I haven't really had to do it in this tank um, as of yet. Oh, actually, no, I have. I've, I've had to remove the, um, the two Salvini and put them in this tank down here. Um, but the, if, if things do get too aggressive, you might have to sell some fish. You, like, for, for example, this guy, if he gets too aggressive and he starts doing a lot of damage to other fish, yes, you do have to maybe sell something on or, or have another tank um, to, to put him in. But, uh, but yeah, that's, um, that's one thing you might have to sell some fish. So that's point number two. All right. So for point number three, you might've noticed over the past, um, couple of months through these videos, I haven't really been posting, uh, for a long time, but you might've seen a little bit of steady growth in, in these fish. And, you know, I might've added a couple of fish because they are relatively young and relatively small still. Um, for example, we've got a, a young Dovia in here and, and we've actually got a, a young red devil in here as well. Um, well, it's actually, it's actually one of the first crossbreeds I've ever kept. It's a, it's a red devil cross blood parrot, but because a blood parrot is mostly red devil, I thought, you know, what the hell, it looks really nice and it's got blue eyes, so bugger it. It's, I'm just gonna put it in my community tank. So anyway, um, but yeah, point, point number th uh, three is you need to grow out all these fish, um, young and small together, if you want success in a tank. So they want to grow up and they, that if, you, if you want the most success, you've got to have these grow, growing up together thinking, you know, these are my buddies, these are my pals, these are the fish that I know, I know that I can trust them, I've grown up with them. They, they, obviously, not, they're not going to be thinking like this, but that's basically what you should be thinking um, of, okay, well, you know, if you've got a tight-knit little family of, of, of 10 people, you know, you've got, you've got the parents, the kids and, and the grandkids or whatever it is, um, and, and you go and plop in a massive stranger, then holy dooly, there's, there's a, there's a massive conflict and there's like, who, who is this person? And people are aggressive and all this kind of stuff. But if you grow these fish out when they're, when they're really nice and young and you grow them out together and, and everything like that, you know, in this tank, these fish are, are getting to sexual maturity. We've had a couple of spawnings already happen in this tank and we've got fish that are, are, are verging on, you know, um, five, six inches and they are all aggressive yet it's, it's quite, well, other than that, it's quite harmonious in, in this tank. Um, but little things will happen all the time. You know, there will be little bits of damage to your fish and, and there, there is going to be little conflicts because these are aggressive fish, but, but yeah, um, 
that's that's definitely definitely something I want to touch on. N- number three is you need to grow your fish out together while they're young for the best rate of success. Alrighty, so the next thing that I want to focus on, this is point number four, um, is you want to make sure you have way, way, way too many hiding spots. Um, so you can see in this tank, it's kind of sh- in shambles right now. Like there's a bit of open space down here. Um, but we've got, you know, a couple of small logs. We've got a large log here. We've got rocks leaning every which way. Um, we've got a lot of plants. We've got rocks leaning up all, all around the back. We've got a weird terracotta log. Um, we've got this cave that's at the back. So little, little fish can kind of go into that cave and go up in the hollow of this cave section. Um, we've got, you know, more, more little caves over here. We've got a pot. We've got heaps of, heaps of rocks and everything like that. And the reason that you want way too many hiding spots is that these fish are aggressive and they need to be able to hide. And, and you know, because they establish quite a... I just want to film this. Um, because they establish quite a, an impressive uh, territory, then, you know, you need the uh, subdominant fish to be able to find a place to, uh, to hide and, um, and get away from the aggression. So, uh, so yeah, that's, um, that's uh, point number four. You want to make way too many hiding spots for your fish so they feel safe. Alrighty, and now for point number five. Point number five is is something that I'm surprised I haven't been uh, ridiculed for for yet, but it's actually something that I'm, I'm well aware of. Um, when you're doing a community tank of uh, South and Central American cichlids, um, you want to make sure you've got ample fil- filtration because you need to overstock your tank because you're going to have to um, overstock it to disperse all the aggression. So if you've got one really asshole fish, but you want to keep it, um, you need enough fish in there for the aggression to be dispersed amongst all the other fish. And, uh, and, and that way, you know, you'll, it, it, it'll reduce casualties. It'll reduce, um, reduce uh, damage done to a small amount of fish. So for example, if you had um, a, a red devil in here and then a couple of festes, and that's all that was in the tank, and the red devil had only the option to fi- uh, to pick on the festes, then the festes would would be in danger. They would actually probably um, die from stress. So, but if you had you know a red devil, a couple of festes, um, a couple of sinspillums, a bacordi cichlid, a small dovii, and maybe a, a couple of rivulatus, then then yeah, the aggression is going to be dispersed because that red devil, even though you might really want to keep that red devil, which is this guy here, if you really want to keep that red devil and it's turning out to be a, a bit of an asshole and picking on all the other fish, then you need to actually overstock your tank to disperse the aggression. Now, in saying that, you need to keep on top of your water changes. There's going to be a lot more bacteria, uh, sorry, not, not bacteria, uh, ammonia um, in the tank. There's going to be a lot more poo, a lot more food that you're going to be putting in there. So you want to keep on top of your gravel vacuums and your water changes. But yeah, so that is number five, overstock your tank with uh, a lot of fish to disperse the aggression. Alrighty, so point number six that I wanna um, touch on is is one that I can't really demonstrate too well in this tank because it's it hasn't got a lot of floor space, but the, the main thing that you wanna focus on if you have a, uh, a, a community tank is you wanna make sure there is a lot more floor space than height. So for, for this aquarium, it's six foot long, um, it is two foot wide, and it's uh, two and a half foot or almost two and a half foot tall. So it's 70 centimeters. Um, so it's, it's taller than it is wide. Now that's because it's, it's a display tank, it's inside, and I wanted it to look uh, very aesthetic in here. But if you wanted, um, if you wanted the best success with, uh, with keeping sa- uh, South and Central American cichlids, is you wanna make sure they've got a lot of floor space to, fl- to swim around. They don't need a lot of height. Um, so you could have a two foot high tank, no worries. And if you had a three foot wide and six foot long tank, then all of a sudden the surface area they have to swim around in is way, way more. So that, that's really important. So this tank, it might be a little bit of a struggle for me to get a a lot of different fish, uh, to stay in here harmoniously. Um, but if you want to attempt this kind of thing, definitely 100% go for, go for width, um, rather than height because the fish will thank you for it. Alrighty, so point number seven that I want to touch on is visual blocks. 
Now, by visual blocks, what I'm talking about is you want to have something, a structure of some sense, in the way. So if one fish is hiding behind it, you know, a, another fish won't be able to see it. So the, the, a really important thing, we'll come around here, and it's a bit, little bit dirty on this side, which um, I'm actually, uh, I, I kind of want that. I want it to grow all this algae. Um, because it helps with the um, it helps with the uh, balance of the bacteria of the tank. But anyway, you can see here if you know this guy right here, the Zenatus. While he's in this section, nothing else in the tank can really see him unless they're hovering behind or, or they can actually see. But this pot right here, this is a visual block to this section. This creates a territory. So what I'm going to be showing you right now is the different territories that I've designed by placing things in certain certain ways to. Um, to uh, have visual blocks to stop the other fish from being able to see each other. So this is our first one, and we come around here. You kind of have another one that's kind of in and underneath this pot. Um, inside the pot is another visual block. This rock is creating another one. Um, all this log space, it's creating a, lot, a lot of height. So anything that's hiding behind uh, the log, I can't even see it myself. So there might be a fish behind there, I don't know. Um, you know, there's, there's all these rocks just sticking up here. There's a long log tunnel that goes all the way uh, to the back and it's hollowed out. So there's a long one there. Anything on either side of the log, you know, you can't see. Inside the skull, in these logs, all these kind of stuff. Anything that is in this tank that is, is causing a block of, um, of vision from any other fish while another fish is taking refuge behind, that's what we want. So you want to make sure that you've got a lot of things in the tank when you're doing a, a tank like this to make sure that, yeah, fish can hide, they can feel safe without the other fish being able to actually visually see them. So, I mean, in this tank, we could probably have something a little bit higher, but I haven't had any issues for the past uh, month or so, so we'll, we'll keep it as it is. But visual blocks, very important. Alrighty, and for our final point, point number eight, I want to go through... Uh, a spare tank. A spare tank is probably the most important thing that you that you need in your arsenal. So you either need to have a divider or a spare tank that you that you can separate your fish. So if you have a fish that's being overly aggressive, you can take it out and plop it. Oh, pardon me. That you can take it out of your your main tank and you can put it in a spare tank um, if the aggression is too much. So these guys, these Salvini, they they are very mature as compared to the fish above. So they were causing a lot of um, a lot of aggression and a lot of ruckus because they're old. They're they're adults. Um, these are a, they, these are a breeding pair. Well, I assume they are. They've paired up. I just haven't had them breeding yet. Um, but they they are too aggressive for the tank above. So I had to take them out and put them in their own tank. So that's exactly why you need a, a tank, uh, a spare tank to be able to put um, fish in. So you might be using it for uh, aggression, you might use it as a hospital tank if, you, if one of your fish gets sick or if it gets injured from fighting with another one of your other fish. But this is pretty much the most important thing when it comes to keeping uh, South and Central Amer American cichlids. You need a hospital tank or you need a, yeah, you need a spare tank to, uh, to, house, um, to house your fish if, if things do go wrong because, you know, if you're keeping a um, tropical freshwater tank with guppies and um, and tetras and uh, all these kind of fairly passive things, you don't really need a spare tank. If things go wrong in the tank, nothing nothing really happens of it. If things have a fire, it, it, there's no real damage done. But with these guys, we need to face the facts. And yes, you you definitely need another tank because things can go wrong. So um so those are those are just uh, eight tips that I wanted to go through today. Um just of uh, you know, what what is essential when you're when you're looking at keeping South and Central American cichlids? It's it's really not all that daunting. I mean, um, if you just go through the list that I've that I've put up uh, and and just and just follow those steps, you're gonna have some forms of success. Um, but the probably another one just to retouch on is, yeah, you may need to sell some fish if they get too aggressive, um, and you may need to separate into other tanks. So. Uh, so anyway, guys, we're just gonna uh, we're gonna finish it off there. Um, thanks for thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, we're gonna the next video we're gonna be jumping straight into the fish room um, because the tanks have arrived and I cannot wait to get them cycling and get them fully set up and, and starting to mature, ready for some uh, ready for some beautiful fish. See you in the next one. Thanks, guys.